Hi, Matthias from 10 Minute Physics here. Welcome to tutorial number 14. Today I'm going to reveal the secret of class simulation. We will use it to write a very fast demo that simulates 6000 triangles at 30 frames per second on my 3 year old cell phone. Let's start. This is my Galaxy S10. As you can see, simulating this piece of cloth with over 6000 triangles takes about 20 milliseconds per frame. This is the same demo on my desktop. As you can see, it only takes about 13 milliseconds per frame. It's also unconditionally stable. The reason is that I use XPBD or Extended Position Based Dynamics. This is the method I advocate on this channel. Have a look at tutorial number 9 where I explain it in detail. As usual for the slides and demos, have a look at my webpage at www.matthiasmuller.info slash 10 minute physics. So let me reveal the secret of cloth simulation. It's very simple. Cloth only bends. Of course, as rigid bodies are not perfectly rigid, cloth is stretchable. However, typically only between 0 and 5% and has a very strong stretch limit. So when you apply a force, it stretches a little bit, but then keeps its length as you increase the force. Try it at home. Try it with shirts, jeans, skirts, leather jackets, rain jackets, towels, curtains, tents, tarpaulin, flags and carpets. Gravity is rarely strong enough to cause noticeable stretching. I have never noticed too little stretching in a cloth simulation. However, too much stretching is a bad visual artifact. What about latex or other stretchable material? Well, there you don't have dynamics, it's just quasi-static motion, so you can use skeletal skinning to animate this. So what's the conclusion? Forget about all sophisticated cloth models. They simulate this very small part of the force elongation curve. What we want is to simulate an infinitely stiff material, but how? Force-based methods explode. The solution is the XPBD or Extended Position-Based Dynamics method. We simply use zero compliance distance constraints on the cloth mesh edges. The cool thing is there are no parameters to tune. The only remaining effect is bending resistance, and we only have one parameter for this. We can handle this as a constraint between two neighboring triangles. There are two popular approaches here. In the first one, we add an additional distance constraint between the opposing particles. It's simple, but weak in the flat state. The other solution is to use the angle between the two triangles. Such a constraint is strong in the flat state, but more expensive to simulate. I will talk about it in a future tutorial. Since we need triangle neighbors to create bending constraints, I'll show you how to find these neighbors fast. First, we define a global edge number, which is three times the triangle number plus the local edge number. In this example, we have edges 0, 1, 2 of triangle 0 and 3, 4, 5 of triangle 1. First, we create a list for each edge. The first entry is the minimum of the indices, the second one the maximum of the indices and the third one the global edge number. It's important that the indices are sorted. Now we sort the entire list. As you can see, adjacent edges appear next to each other. From this information, we can compute an edge neighbor list. A minus one means the edge is open. Now, if you want to know what the neighbor of triangle 0 across local edge 2 is, we first compute the global edge number. In this case, it's 2. We check the neighbor list and read a 4. 4 means it's triangle 1 with local edge number 1. As you can see, this is the correct result. Now, let's have a look at the code. I took the code mostly from the soft body example. These are the fast vector functions that operate directly on float32 arrays. The function find triangle neighbors is the implementation of the method that I just explained. First, I run through all the triangles and all their edges and create the edge list. Next, the edge list is sorted. Then I run through all the entries of the sorted list. If the indices of two consecutive entries in the list are equal, then I fill in the neighbor list accordingly. The cloth class is very similar to the soft body class. 
An important difference is how to create the constraints. Here I first compute the neighbors. Then I run through all the triangles and all their edges. For each edge I create a distance constraint. For each triangle pair I create a bending constraint. I store all the four indices of the triangle neighbors. For a simple bending constraint we only need ID2 and ID3. However, for a future implementation in which I will use the angles between the triangles, I will use all four indices. Here I create the visual meshes, the edge mesh and the triangle mesh. This is the implementation of XPBD. The first loop updates all the velocities and all the positions of the particles. Here we solve the constraints. We have two types, the stretching and the bending constraints. After this we update the velocities. This is the code to solve a distance constraint that I showed many times before. Since we use distance constraint for bending resistance, the code is identical. The difference is that we now use the bending IDs. This concludes the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, thanks for watching and I see you in the next one.